Hey everybody, um, if you're watching this video, you are probably in my class, um, so you know what this video is about. If you are not in my class, I'm essentially going to go over a project I've been working over the last couple months, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Um, you know, I put a lot of work into this, I'm very proud of it, and I'm glad I get to show it off to you guys. So before I get into it, I just want to ask that you subscribe and like the, ch uh, like the video if you haven't already, and uh, let's get into it. So, first, so, all right, so I'm going to give a quick PowerPoint presentation um, over my bug tracker before we get into it. So, let's get into it. So, obviously, it's called the Bug Tracker Project. My name is Cody. Um, I'm in the third semester of uh, college. So uh, it's been lots of fun. Um, some things about me, I'm 27. Like I said, I attend Rankin Technical College. I've built many projects during my time at Rankin, but I really feel like none have really pushed me quite like the Bug Tracker Project has. Um, I would say my end goal when I am outside of school and done with Rankin would have to be just to be working on functional products that improve the lives of others and myself you know i think if i'm doing that i'm going to be in a very good place in my life and i'll be very happy and feel very fulfilled um so uh the reason we started the bug tracker project it was part of the course curriculum however i never expected it to quite be as large as it ended up being um you know and that's not necessarily a bad thing it just means the scope of this project was very big and so it was broken down into more manageable chunks that we worked on, you know, over the course of the semester. Um, so with every lab, we pretty much expanded on the project. And, you know, honestly, I feel like what I've learned in this semester has been more than like I've ever learned in school, you know, and I know I'm exaggerating a bit, but, you know, it really was a lot that we learned to bring this project together, you know, just from databases to the back end to, you know, learning React, you know, it's, it's been a really fun and enlightening experience to learn all the things that I've gotten to learn through my time during this course. Some things that I would improve. Um, I think testing is where I really need to make improvements. I definitely think I kind of shot myself in the foot when it came to some of my work just you know cutting corners and trying to get things done quickly you know and it seems like a good idea on paper you know like yeah get something done in 30 minutes you know it's great you know but what ends up happening more often than not is you have to come back and spend two extra hours or more fixing mistakes because you didn't test your application properly so definitely something i'm going to improve on in the future definitely something i'm constantly trying to improve on, you know, and um, I'm aware of it and I'm trying to do better. So some similar applications. Um, Twitter is one that I think of that comes to mind because essentially the user can register an account, they can make comments and people can post on those comments. Um, also, there are other bug trackers out there that are actually uh, software as a service that they sell to companies. And so obviously those are similar to my bug tracker. The one that I found was called Airbrake and I thought it was kind of neat because they had a lot of graphs and you know I thought that was kind of a cool feature they incorporated. Um, so some final things, uh, just key features I want to point out before we jump into the project itself. Um, so obviously I wanted it to be pretty simple for the user to be able to add and comment on the bugs because that is initially the key reason they are using the bug tracker. And so I didn't want to overcomplicate that. And so with a push of a button, you can start adding a bug or add a comment. Um, also, it's possible to register new accounts. Um, when you register an account though, there's not much you can do because you do need to be assigned a role. And that's just, you know, for safety reasons say you know it's a new hire and you want to get them familiar with the system before you give them you know keys to the kingdom you know you can do that and then assign them a role when you feel they're ready to start incorporating to the bug tracker project um it is also possible to close bugs once they have been um 
completed and they've been corrected. Um, it's also possible to reclassify them, which is another useful feature. Um, another thing I like, which, you know, it's pretty common on most applications, but, you know, I really like how mine turned out is the nav bar. I feel like it really helps making navigating the page um, very easily um, and effective. So without further ado, I think we can jump into the bug tracker project. And um, I'm currently logged in. So we'll, so this is the page you'll see when you first uh, load up the application. It is the login form. It's pretty standard. You enter your email and a password. So pretty in line with other applications, you know, having to prove you are who you are. So that way you can do what you need to in the application. So it's possible to register an account. And this is the register form. And obviously you would fill out all the required fields, hit register, and then you would be taken into the bugs list page. Now you can't do anything or see anything. Like I said, you need to be assigned a role. Um, I, The thought process there was just for safety reasons that they don't go and mess with anything before they know how the company wants to go forward, you know? And that was kind of the thought process why you aren't initially assigned a role when the user first creates an account. So anyway, um, we are going to log in because I already have an account. And when we do that, we are initially taken to the bugs list page. And here you can see we have a search bar and a list of bugs. And then at the bottom, there's a way to add new bugs. So very easy to add a new bug. You just click add new bug, it takes you to the add bug page, and then you fill out the three fields and hit add. So we can say, hello world. This is a test and have a nice day and add. So now at the top here, we can see that our new bug has been added to the list. Now the search feature is a very helpful tool. So if you have lots of bugs, you know, it might be hard to find exactly what you're looking for. And that's where the search functionality comes in hand. Initially, everything is loaded. Um, so every bug with every classification and every status. And from there, you can start narrowing down your search. You can search keywords. So if we wanted to search test, we can do that. Um, we can take that out and go back to all the bugs. Um, we can search by minimum age. So if we, let's say 30 days, we want everything above 30 days, we can hit search and we get everything above 30 days. On the opposite side of that, if we want to look for a max of 30 days, we can do that as well. So that's a pretty nifty way to search for the newest or latest bugs or bugs within a certain time frame. Um, it's also possible to narrow your search down by different classifications. So that's kind of helpful. Um, you can also search for only open bugs or only closed bugs, depending on if you need to go back and look at bugs that have been closed out. It's also possible to sort. Um, oh, well, I should probably get all the bugs. It'd be a little easier for you to see the sorting process. So we can sort by title, which uh, we can sort by classification. Okay, what's going on here? There we go. Sorry about that. Search by classification. We can search by signed and so forth. So that is essentially the bugs list. And from there, if we want to go into the individual bugs, we have that ability. We can update them and say, let's say we call this I'm new. Hello. And we get an update. And it should update the bug. Now it's also possible to change it to closed. And you'll get this little pop up to make sure that you are positive you want to do that. You can change the classification again with the pop up. And we can assign it to whoever we would like. It is also possible to come down here and to add comments. So again, we'll say hello world. And we can post a comment. So kind of another nifty feature to the bug edit page. And so from there, we can go into the users list, which has another similar um, search functionality. 
So we can search by keywords. If you want to search Bob, we can search Bob and we shall get Bob. Um, it's also possible to search from oldest to newest and tons of, tons of other sort features. Um, we can also search by days. So if we wanted to look everything over two days, we could do that and then vice versa, everything under two days. So just kind of some search features on both sides of the bugs list and user list that can just make the life of people using the application a lot easier. Um, so furthermore, if we go back and we bring up all the bugs, it is possible to chain, update users. So you can update the first name, last name, or their full name. You can also change the, or you can't change the email. The email will need to be changed by the database admin because um, it's just for purposes of security and login. Um, I felt that that was not something that should be easy for the user to change, but you are able to see it. So this is a read only field, um, but it is there and you can see it. Um, it's also possible to update your password and give people different roles as I am going to do here. So we'll change his name. We'll say Bo Jack. And we'll change his full name and update. So now if we refresh the page, refresh the pages. And now you might see that I left the password field blank. Well, that is because you don't have to change your password to update the user. So that way, you know, you don't have to, if you, someone misspelled their name or whatever the reason, or someone gets married, you can change the user without having to reset their password. So kind of a helpful thing to just help people remember their passwords and not have to change them before they might be ready or if their password is not compromised. Um, so that is the user list. And I think that is about everything. If you hit home, it takes you back to the login form. Um, you can also log out. So, you know, that is essentially my project in a nutshell one thing i do kind of want to show you is i do kind of want to show you everything in mobile form because it can be used either from the phone or from the web browser and i feel like that is a pretty important thing when building an application so what we're going to do is we are going to if you bear with me for one second it's f12 we're going to go into this mode I don't need that really open. And oh, I gotta keep that open. Uh, so, and we're gonna go to iPhone X. And so, as you can see, the layout changes, the nav bar changes, and it looks aesthetically pleasing. And um, so, we'll submit, and you will see that you have a drop down. So, that way, the nav bar doesn't have to be huge and in your face the entire time, just when you need it. You can also scroll down, use the search feature, still click on bugs, update them if need be, change the classification, and so forth. And same with user list. Um, you can also go in and do the same with users. So pretty neat. Um, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Um, I guess some final words um, just before I close out this presentation, which Bear with me for one second. I think the bug tracker was a really good project. I'm really happy with how it turned out and everything I learned from it. Um, you know, I hope ranking students that come after me get to work on a project as fulfilling as this. Um, you know, it taught me a lot. I learned a lot. And, you know, I think it's going to be a project that I talk about for a long time and I show off in you know, por my portfolio. So um, with that, um, I'm gonna sign off. I had a lot of fun doing this um, and I hope everyone enjoys their Christmas break because that's around the time I'm posting this video. And again, if you haven't, make sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe. Later, everybody.